More and more people who work in social services are discovering that uh, one of the most important things in helping people is to remove stigma. Whether it's about abuse or addiction or mental health issues, uh, knowledge is the one thing that can help eradicate stigma. And so we're happy here at ON TV to be able to give a platform to some social service agencies to point out the work that they do in the community to help remove stigma. And here today on Point with Tim Murphy, members of Community Living Algoma. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after this quick message. Correct. The Executive Director of Community Living Algoma and Jared Sessions. Uh, you're an apprentice. No, what are you? You're I'm a placement a student. Placement student. Yes. Kind of like an apprentice. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also Community Living Algoma and you're a, currently a student at Sioux College? That's correct. That's yeah. right. And your name has two Zs in it. It does and two Ys. Two Zs and two Ys. That's a very busy name. <laughs> and John Policicchio has more Cs than you can shake a stick at. Uh, <laughs> nice to have you with us. Uh, you, talking about Community Living Algoma and the work that they do in our community um, and the changes that we've seen over the years. Let's start there, John. 29 years with the agency? Yes, 29 fortunate years, I would say. Nice um, put. And I've, I've had a broad range of experience throughout the organization. The last uh, 17 years have been as executive director, which has been a real pleasure. Um, so we, we our services started in 1954. So to move quickly from 1954 to uh, 2018, there's been quite an evolution and change in how we deliver services to people with intellectual disabilities. What started off as hard work by what I refer to as pioneers, those early families who were, uh, there was no supports available to them or funding from the provincial government until 1954, were really struggling to find a place for their sons and daughters. Uh, these families had made decisions not to send their sons and daughters to institutions, so they worked tirelessly to prepare for what was the evolution of a service system at the time being introduced here in Sault Ste. Marie in 1954. And uh, a lot of the focus was really about isolating individuals and segregating people and keeping people in groups, and then there was the evolution to a program model of service delivery, and now what we see is what we probably should have been doing all our lives and that is making sure that people with disabilities belong and that they're included in community, participating in community, working, volunteering, doing the same things you and I have opportunities to do and experience within our community. Reflecting back, uh, you were saying that it, it's, you have to give yourself a break, I guess, to a certain extent because, uh, thank goodness, uh, with education and understanding, everything has shifted. Uh, the way that society views people with intellectual disabilities has changed over the years. Yes. Um, the way that we op the way that you operate, well, not you, but the way that agencies operated a uh, hundred years ago, <laughs> certainly are not going to be the same as they are today. Uh, for, so from the 50s to now, uh, there's obviously been a change in the way that not only um, people are seen by society, but also by the, how they are treated by the agencies who deal with them. Yes. So, whereas we used to, uh, as we say, keep them segregated, keep people with intellectual dis disabilities segregated, now the goal is to actually give them a quality of life uh, because a lot of it is the fact that we have to recognize the abilities, focus on ability rather than disability, correct? Correct. And it's that sort of um, strength-based approach. What does someone have to offer? You mentioned gifts. Gifts, absolutely. Um, again, we want people's gifts to shine. We all um, are on this earth with gifts and an ability to contribute and with sometimes with people with disabilities you just got to bring that out of them um, you know I'm I'm very honored and humbled to have had the career I've had with this organization the people we support have taught me a lot and I believe they've taught people in society a lot in terms of their abilities and the joy they are to be around with and to do things with um, again it's very exciting work um, it doesn't come without challenges sometimes you're met uh, with some level of resistance in some corners of community but overall I think we have a lot to be proud of throughout the district of Algoma how much the community communities and the citizens of those communities have embraced people with disabilities and we're very proud of that that's terrific now so we're going to go from 29 years to a month how long have you been placed now with Algoma uh, with sorry with community living Algoma uh, I'm in on my last week now I've only got uh, about two more days left of my placement two so, more days left of yeah. your placement after, and it's been a month it has been a month, four weeks, yeah. Okay, so listen, we have to take a quick break. 
we can see how fast this goes when we have fun. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take about a 60 second break and we're going to come back and I want to talk to you about your experience in the month that you've been there and uh, what you're taking away and hopefully maybe what you're going to bring back. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. We're going to get more of Derek's story coming up after this quick break. You're on point with Tim Murphy. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying on point with Tim Murphy. I'm joined once again by John Polachikio and with uh, Jarrett Semsessions. Uh, John, 29 years with Community Living Algoma and Jarrett, just about a month now with your placement from Sioux College. Tell me, uh, how did, uh, what's your background, Jarrett? Are you from Sioux St. Marie originally? I am, born and raised, yep. Excellent, went to high school here? St. Mary's College, yes. And then after college, I mean after St. Mary's High School, where did you go to? Uh, I enrolled at uh, Cameron College in the journalism program, so I had a two year diploma from there. Excellent, and then where did that lead? Well that led me back to the Sioux, uh, and I took a student uh, position at Algoma Steel, and I stayed there for uh, just under five years, and I decided wow. that I wanted to get back to school. And you went back to school after you've been at SR Algoma for a number of years? Yeah, I, I love the work there, but I just felt like I contribute just a little bit more in terms of uh, my media background and whatnot. So Absolutely. So where did you go back to school to? I went to school at Sioux College. Where you are now? Where I am oh, now, I understand. yeah. Okay. And the program is? Uh, public Relations and Event Management. Very cool. That's with Gino Cavello? Yes, yeah, so outstanding game. teacher. Outstanding teacher. There you go. Kudos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So the placement, this, they, did they approach you? Who approached you or did you approach them for the placement at CLA? Well, one of the most exciting parts of the program uh, at Sioux College is that uh, we actually have employers from uh, the city come in and watch us present. So after one of our presentations, uh, I was informed that uh, John and, and Leslie from CLA had uh, you know, expressed in, interest in me doing my placement there. So Wow. Yeah. That's it's really exciting. And yeah. that's how it happened. Yeah. And now after a month, what do you think? Uh, it's really been just an outstanding experience. Uh, I, I had no idea what I was in for at the beginning, but uh, I feel just so overwhelmed with how exciting everything's been. It's flew by. It feels like I just started yesterday, but uh, it's been such an outstanding and, and, you know, really rewarding experience so far. Might there be an opportunity for you to stay at CLA? I mean, is that, a, is that an option? There is. Uh, I'm actually being interviewed uh, at the end of this week, so hopefully wow. if everything goes well. Who's gonna wait, who will interview you? That I'm not entirely sure yet. Do you think it might be John Polachikio? I'm not too sure. Well, just in case, <laughs> let's tell him he's nice shirt, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Nice color on you, John. Jared was saying. Yeah. I just want you to know I won't be interviewed. Oh. oh. <laughs> Phew. All right, well. You could have done better with that shirt, yeah. John. Yeah. No, just <laughs> uh, that, that's very exciting. Now, what about, John's talking about the energy and the enthusiasm, and uh, do you sense that working there? Do you feel that as well? So from day one, since I began at CLA, um, the environment uh, has been something that has been the biggest, uh, I guess, plus for me as, as a student. Uh, I've been welcomed in with like open arms. Mm -hmm. And uh, the staff uh, there and the people that we work with are just so wonderful. Like I, I can't even begin it's a to describe. Dynamic it. bunch of people, aren't they? For sure, for sure. And the cli the client base. I mean, I've had the opportunity and the privilege actually of working with a number of uh, the clients from CLA over the years. Um, I, I mention often Kelly McGilvery, who does great work there, using theater as a means of expression. Um, Rhonda McKay is one of your clients, who's not only a great writer but also a very talented artist. Um, there's other singers and musicians and some people who have amazing personalities with their knowledge of stats and data. It's, it just boggles the mind. The, the just the, as you say, the gifts and the skills that these people have, and that for years, so many of these gifts went uh, unopened. Right. Uh, there was no opportunity for them to share what they can bring to our society and our community. Um, and one, one thing that CLA does is it presents the opportunity for them to share their, share their beauty with us, right? Um, John, you talk about feeling like the luckiest man alive so often. Yes. Because of the joy that you experience from... And, and, and so much to learn. People with disabilities have so much to learn. And, you know, your point about 
um, sharing and that's one of the primary reasons we really got connected with Jared and the communication and media relations uh, initiative is we really know we need to get these stories out there. I think it's the best form of education. Parents need to hear it. Other stakeholders in the community need to hear it as well. Um, and that's one of the things Jared has been instrumental this past month is um, making the organization more technologically savvy and uh, ah. connected to the things that uh, really get these stories and this information out. Listen, I just learned about Twitter this year, so <laughs> <laughs> I know what it means to still play, be playing catch up. And that it really is. It's a whole other platform. Absolutely. The social media and, and all of that. So let's talk a little bit about that when we come back, about the job, what you've been doing there and what you would like to continue to do. This could be like your on, this could be an on air interview, I mean, a job interview. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> could sell yourself right now. Oh, absolutely. Well, I better do a good job. <laughs> yeah, well, gather your thoughts. You've got 60 seconds to get your stuff together, mister. Okay, so listen, we'll be right back on point <laughs> with Jarrett and with John. And joining us later will also be Leslie from Community Living Algoma to talk more about the great work this agency does in our community. Stay tuned. is on point. I'm Tim Murphy. Jared is still with me in the studio and now we're being joined by Leslie Wilson from Community Living Algoma as well. Welcome Leslie. Thank you. Leslie with the Z. Yes. 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 We've had you on the show before when I mentioned your name has a Z. Yes. But guess what? His last name has two Z's in it. I know. <laughs> so you have been his supervisor for the last month. Yes I have. How's that been going for you there Jared? One of the best people I've ever worked with. That was the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> and she may be interviewing you for the job. She might be. Okay, so what, what have you learned from me? Tell her, nice outfit. No, <laughs> no that's not what we talk about. I'm just kidding. Um, four weeks, and uh, you've been working in uh, public relations, media, communications. What are some of the changes that are going to be going on with, uh, with Community Living Algoma in, in the coming days, coming weeks, months, and years, if you stick around? Well... <laughs> My job basically so far has been to perform community outreach. So my job is to kind of, you know, convey the messages that we have internally at CLA to the public and to demographics that might not understand who we are or what our vision is or, or you know, what, what we stand for. So uh, the last couple of weeks have uh, essentially just been me kind of outreaching to the community and trying to grow our social media uh, presence. Uh, so moving forward, uh, that's going to be uh, continue to be the goal for uh, for us, and we want to try and grow it uh, as as much as we can, so we can really keep the uh, community involved. Leslie, about the demographics that you've reached in the past, that you think maybe there's been a bit of a gap. Uh, do you have a, a, a um, is there a demographic in the community that you think is is pretty well informed and understands what's happening, or are you still looking for a, a, a blanket coverage to get every demographic? every demographic but what so far Jared has done has been huge um, we managed to we're over 600 likes on Facebook and we've reached over 12,000 people and that's only in four weeks so if we've done that in four weeks it would be amazing to think what nice we can work. do in the future and we um, we have the Algoma district so it's good for people that don't have newspapers or that can keep in touch and all social media so we have Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and our website to be uh, updated on a daily basis. You know, the, the District of Algoma, that's something that I think a lot of people are surprised when they find out the, the ge ge geographic, the, yes. the geography of Algoma, of, of the Algoma District, how and, and expansive it is. I mean, yes. are, are you guys, do you go to Wawa? So we're Wawa, Horn Payne, Blind River and Elliott Lake. Oh, and okay. Savory. Wow, because yes. I know public health goes all the way to Serpent River, and that's you know that's a two hour, two over a two hour yes. drive to yes. get there from here. And we have offices in each location. You do right? Small, yes. Smaller offices, yes. Uh, and so Jarrett, when you haven't had a lot of dealings with the clients, but I understand that the feeling that is at the office is very much sort of um, it's sort of infused by the work with the clients. Is that true? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I always wanted, uh, when I set out to, to change my career or to sort of enhance it, uh, I wanted to enter a field where I would feel every day when I came into work that uh, I was making a difference or I'm, I'm helping to make a difference. 
and the second you walk into CLA, uh, there's a sense of, of, of pride and there's a sense of uh, just, you just get a good feeling once you walk in the doors. So um, what I've tried to kind of encapsulate and kind of convey to the community is my own personal uh, perception that I've seen. And I want the rest of the community and the rest of Algoma to see, you know, exactly what it is we do and, and, and how great it is uh, of work that we do. So It's so, something that John was talking about earlier um, with some of the, the establishments of the, establishing the residential areas, the, the residences um, in the past. I recall actually being a youngster in Sault Ste. Marie when um, one of the residential homes went up on Queen Street. It's a beautiful, beautiful place, but there was some pushback from the neighborhood. Um, there was uh, some bias. Uh, they didn't want those people in their neighborhood. And we're talking about people who, um, you know, upstanding citizens of Sault Ste. Marie living on Upton Road in a very nice residential neighborhood. Um, you know, God-fearing people who didn't want those people living in their neighborhood. Now that's going back to the 70s, mm -hmm. but still, maybe the late 70s, but still, uh, shocking to think about that now and then again there was another place going up um, in another neighborhood that apparently is a huge success story it was yes. the complete opposite of that because when there was some pushback John said you invited the neighborhood in to the residence where, where uh, the clients would be living and when they met the people when they met the people all of a sudden it was like these people are great they're lovely they're kind they're funny they're they are gifted. Mm -hmm. And now I hear that that home is a hub of activity and that Halloween and Christmas and baking and the neighbors are completely involved in, yes. in the Community Living Algoma residence and the clients who live there. They're as much a part of the neighborhood as yes. anybody. This is something that you noticed, as you say, in your upbringing, it's almost... Um, you, you've grown up in, in an, an education system where special needs students have been... Um, introduced into the school system alongside you, with you as classmates all this time. Very different from when I grew up. We didn't have special needs students in our schools. They didn't attend classes with us. And so there was a disconnect. There was no understanding. It's very different now, is it? Absolutely. I mean, like you said, uh, growing up uh, in the education system that uh, you know I was exposed to, um, it was phenomenal. I mean, everybody was included. It felt uh, we felt a sense of unity, no matter uh, what our learning capabilities were, uh, no matter what. So, um, you know, embracing this and trying to further it even more in today's society is is ultimately the goal. We want everyone to feel included that we all belong, and uh, I think that this organization is just a perfect uh, catalyst for that. And, uh, and again, I, I'm thrilled that I'm, I'm, I'm you know, given the opportunity to, to work in such capacity, so it's been phenomenal. All right, listen, we're going, to take a, before, we're going to take a short break, but Leslie, when we come back, I'd like to talk about some of the success, success stories. Okay. Um, on your website, I noticed that there's a, an area where you, you have some of those good news stories, and um, just once again, putting a face and, and, and real people, attaching that to the agency and to the great work that you do. Can we talk a little bit about that when we come back? Absolutely. Some of the great successes yes. you've had in our community? Yes. All right, then stay with us on point. I'm Tim Murphy, talking with Community Living Algoma, and I'm very excited to share with you some of the great news stories they have for us. Stay tuned. We're on point. I'm Tim Murphy, joined uh, still in the studio with Leslie Wilson and Jarrett Semsession from Community. Did like, oh, I say that? Okay. From Community Living Algoma. So Leslie, I was talking about on the website, uh, just being able to see some of the beautiful stories of some of the clients from CLA. There was one particular story I loved. I believe her name was Selena, and it was a video clip of her getting ready to audition for the Glee Club at White Pines High School, and she she's she's in. It was great, obviously, and I watched the audition. It was just beautiful. Other success stories uh, um, include job placements. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the work that you do with placing, placing CLA clients? So we have an employment network team, and they do full-year employment and um, summer student employment. So they hire a job coach, and they hire a student with a disability, and the job coach and the student work together, and 
so actually an employer gets two for one because they're not only just getting one employer or um, employee, mm -hmm. they're getting two. Right, and so John said, uh, I was talking to John earlier about this, so the, the breakdown would be that CLA is then hiring someone, but not not the client. The client no. is actually being hired by a local business yes. and sort of mentored yes. by this summer student that you've hired. So it's peer-to-peer, -peer. it's yes. student working with student, yes. but one student has a summer job and the other person's position is going to hopefully be permanent, correct? Well, it's it's a summer student job for now. For that student, but yes. for the CLA for the CLA yes. client, Same. they're going to okay. I see. It's yes. a summer job for now. Yes. But hopefully, once they've done the work, the our employer will go. Oh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Where have you been all my life, mm -hmm. right? Right. <laughs> and right. and even even if it ends up being a summer job, what they gain from yes. that, the, the self the, the self respect, right? The the confidence, um, the the uh, self, feeling of self worth. Yes. Right, they're invaluable. Yes, um, must be exciting too to see these changes happen with the CLA clients. Yes, and it's nice to see they're out in the community and they're working. So finally, they're working and actually getting minimum wage. You have twenty nine students 29 this year. This year, from three the first year to twenty nine now. That's that's incredible, and that's in a few short years. That's yes. not that long a time that you've made that those kinds of inroads and in finding employment and mentoring and teaching and realizing how this can really work right uh, with the support of the community now that's very important too we've got to, we've got to educate hello mr social media <laughs> educate the public that once again there are skill sets here that everybody there's a place for everyone in our society and that everyone has something to offer and uh, so give them a chance right take a look at what you've got because then that leads to for some independent living yes You've got some success stories. Success stories where uh, someone has not only gotten a job, but then gone on to say, "I don't want subsidized housing. I'm making enough money to pay full rent. Yes. I'm going to buy myself a scooter and get myself around town." They talk about becoming a functioning, mm -hmm. viable member of society. That's got to be so exciting to participate in. It is, and it's more and more every day, which is really nice. Really, really nice. The, change, the changes yes. that are happening are so important, mm -hmm. and they've been a long time coming. Long time. How, how can, what can, what can we do, what can viewers do if anybody wants to help continue this momentum? Is there, is there a role for the rest of us? Yes, and like I said, you can check us out on social media. You can certainly come in the office. We have positions for volunteers, committee members, board members, um, and we also have a job fair coming up. I think there's a stigma in Sault Ste. Marie about there's not jobs for young people. Well, uh, That's not true. <clears throat> Jarrett and I were talking when I was asking him about being born and raised in Sault Ste. Marie and here we go, another story of a young man who's received his education, has worked a couple of jobs in the city and now is facing the opportunity of perhaps full-time employment again. Um, I don't know, Jarrett, down the line, the family, house, kids? <laughs> Maybe so. I know you're only 25. I don't mean to rush you. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's nice that you have opportunities to stay in your hometown and have a career Absolutely. about in a, in a position that you really care about, that you're passionate about. Absolutely. And like Leslie says, I mean, there's there's uh, definitely a stigma attached to this, uh, this, this city and this district. And I think um, what we're showing, especially with our job fair coming up at the end of the month, is that there are positions for people who are um, graduating out of programs and who are looking to make career changes, much like I did. And, uh, and the opportunity is now, and there's plenty of opportunity here in town. Well, maybe while we're in this segment, we can touch on this then. How many jobs are you looking at filling at CLA coming up? 60 before the end of July. <laughs> You want to hire 60 people between now and July? Yes. We've hired some. This is incredible. Some, yes. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You've hired some already? Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. And well, the, is the job fair part of this hire? Is this, this is tying in? I mean, is that what the job fair is about? It's yes. finding the people to fill those positions. Yes. Mm -hmm. When is it? It is May 31st. Okay. Uh, and it's at uh, the Algoma Water Tower in the West Courtyard. Okay. Uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. And all those who attend are encouraged to bring a resume because you might get interviewed on the spot. On the spot? Yes. Ooh, that's exciting too. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there, if somebody wanted to prepare for an interview like that, 
is there anywhere that they could go to research or find out about how they might impress you folks with, with their skill sets and their resumes? Would you recommend any anywhere to for them to? So you've put out a press release yeah. and a job posting. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. So that'll help them know what they need. It'll explain a little bit more about what the jobs are. Yes, and again, we encourage everyone to kind of stay posted on our social media feeds because all of this stuff is being posted out to our followers. Look at you putting out press releases <laughs> and everything. Gino would be so proud. <laughs> And the one thing that they really should look at is our mission, vision, and values. All right, and those are available on your website, yes. I would imagine. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, is that www.communitylivingalgoma.org? Dot org. Yes. Okay, listen, we're going to take a short break, but we want to talk about more of the, uh, the stuff coming up this month yes. and then also in the coming months. Sure. Different, some of the events you have going on, yes. uh, awareness raising campaigns, activities, that yes. sort of stuff, okay? Yes. And good. then in the future, um, we're hoping to join with CLA and perhaps have a monthly installment to share these great stories and the work that you're doing and just um, some human interest stories following some of the clients around with uh, how, how this integration is working out and how important it is not only to them but to the people around them yes. and how they can affect our lives so positively like they've affected yours, Jarrett. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So listen, stay with us on point. We'll take a quick 60 second break and be right back with a little more from Leslie. And you know what? I think I'm going to bring John back in too to keep you company, Leslie. Sounds good. All right. Mr. Polachicki will join us again right after this. On point with Tim Murphy. Stay tuned. Thanks for sticking around on point. I'm Tim Murphy and I brought John Policicchio back into the studio to join Leslie and I. Leslie, we're talking first, John, John just hang in there. We're talking Hello. first about uh, Community Living Month. This yes. May, the month of May has been and will continue to be for the next week or so. Yes. Uh, talk, talk to me a little bit about that. So we started with the proclamation and then we went into events that we host for employee to appreciate their work that they do on a daily basis. So we have an employee appreciation lunch and then a dinner. And then we also have a volunteer appreciation dinner for our board committee and, or sorry, board members and committee members and all the people that volunteer throughout the years, throughout the year at all our events and. Do you have, do you have any idea how many volunteers do you see a year? Do you know? I mean, so right now, I think I have about 82. Wow, that's fantastic. Yes. That's, okay, where do you, how do you find them? Well, those are board committee members and uh, people out in the community and friends and it just happens. We had a nice. group from, um, it used to be Basil, St. Basil's, mm -hmm. and a lot of one of the teacher's class, he recruited to come and help at our barbecue last year. So I have about 14 or 15 students that want to keep hey, coming back. Hey, so yeah. the youth engagement thing, and once again, socialization, Yes. right? And yes. John, John pointed out to me, um, Sometimes it, you, there are sensitivity issues. F for instance, you guys, I was at this uh, event at Sioux College, and um, there were First Nations people there, and, and they were doing some smudging, and there were some ceremonies going on, and they were doing a, a, a song, and, and I clapped after the song was over. It's like, no, no, so they were summoning spirits, and you don't clap after that kind of stuff because that is detrimental. It kind of undoes what you just did, right? right. So there's education involved when you're working with uh, groups of people, and I have been identifying um, CLA individuals, individuals who you, that you work with as clients, and that is not a term that we like to use. So I've been corrected, and I appreciate that. So because they aren't to look at them as clients is very sort of cold and um, uh, clinical. Yeah, they yeah. are they are individuals. They are people. They they. They are members of 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 the community living Algoma group, right? Yeah, we um, you know there, there's been a strong movement by self advocates, a real strong empowerment movement where uh, people with disabilities are lobbying and advocating, and they're making it very clear through People First and other forms they have councils um, how they want to be referred to. They want to be in, referred to as people or individuals as opposed to clients, because clients has a very different connotation. Mm -hmm. And so for people to be integrated and included, there's this stigma that is associated with how they're referred to. And so um, it's been remarkable over the years how this, empower, uh, this empowerment and this lobbying and activist movement by people with disabilities themselves 
and how they're influencing change on their own. But then you get an organization like ours that can certainly help move that, uh, that information for that. forward. You advocate for that and, and in so doing, the, the, you are asking for respect that is deserved. Absolutely. So I thank you for pointing that out oh, to me. Uh, yes. So uh, how else is CLA going to be active this month to so celebrate the Community first, Living Month? The first week on social media, we had a draw for a $50 gift card for the Hound Pound. Oh, and fun. so that was the first week. The second week was for 10 spot for all those mothers for Mother's Day. Ah. Third week was a Silver Creek Golf Right. And this week will be a gift card for North Grand Gardens for okay. dinner for two. Beautiful. And then the last week we'll wrap up with Root River Golf. Okay. Yes. And, and then, of course, at the end of the month, May 31st, is the job fair. The job fair yes. that we heard about from, yes. from Jarrett. Um, what about down, down the road? What, what are we looking at down the road for CLA? So in June we have our big annual general meeting and again that will be at the Water Tower Inn and we will have success stories and videos there. And that information is on the website as well. Yes. Anybody who's interested in attending the and that's open to the public annual general meeting, yes? Yes, and okay. members. And members as well. And then in August we have a community barbecue. Oh! So lot, and it's usually at Bondar and again this year it will be there at August 8th. At the Roberta Bondar Pavilion? Yes. And August the 8th? August the 8th, it's a Wednesday. Okay. And um, last year, we decided to open it to community as well, because it's part of our inclusion. Right. So we sold 650 tickets and 671 attended. <laughs> <laughs> so it was amazing. That is true. Yes. That's terrific. Yes. Uh, what about if people want to go in August? It's not. Is it too soon to start buying tickets too now? Too soon yet, okay. so that uh, it'll go out as a notice, and um, maybe I can come back and promote that. And they, oh, can, okay. and they can call the office, or they can pop in and buy a ticket. I think I know somebody. I might be able to get you. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and then the week after that, August 17th, we are partnered with the Sault Ste. Marie Airport Development Corp, and yes. we've been the recipient of their golf tournament for the last few years they've chosen you as the yes uh, f to receive the funds from the fundraising yes, which is awesome so that'll happen and what we've done with some of the proceeds we've we started a fund called opportunities and um, opportunities and that assists people that we support get out and do the things that they couldn't do out in the community and then we also um, had walls memorial walls built in each District. Is that in, and now is that ceremony in September? So the memorial wall is the design that was chosen by the committee is a tree okay. and on this tree there's leaves individual leaves and each leaf is a person supported or staff that have passed away the previous year and it's placed on the memorial wall tree and we have a celebration of life in a memorial for every fall. And the, pe the families of people supported or staff come and they will place the leaf on the tree. It's very nice. That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, where are the, are the walls located? In, in all the districts. In the, really? Yes. So there's smaller versions in the other district. Oh. And ours, actually last year, we had to build an extension, which is not really a good thing, but we had to build the extension on the memorial wall. And they're portable. So if we ever had to move offices, we could take it with us. Oh, and okay. people just love it. They think it's... It's a really nice way to remember and to celebrate. And when people come into the office, <laughs> they will all often look at it and just admire it. Very nice. Uh, John, before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you a little bit about some of the statistics that are encouraging um, the changes that you've seen in the community and, and some of the numbers that, uh, that Community Living Algoma is putting out for the individuals that are involved. Um, so sure. we, we heard about the 29 jobs, jobs, uh, jobs, yes. When did that start? How did this progress? It started uh, three years ago, so we're moving into our fourth summer. In and three years you've gone from, gone from 3 to 29 students between the ages of 16, 15 and 20 who are uh, successfully being employed in places, businesses, etc. throughout our community. And uh, we're very proud of that accomplishment. We're also very proud, a few years ago, we uh, implemented a plan to transition our sheltered workshop. We had 97 individuals 
who yeah. are now fully community uh, integrated and included. For those who don't know, let's just go back on the workshop, the yes. sheltered workshop. Can you explain a little bit about how that used to function? Because I sure. understand that we've, sure. we've transitioned out of that now. So, so again, as we look back, we, we try and look at the uh, accomplishments that, that were there and present in that it was a place where people were developing skills to some degree, but what we came to realize, again, as, as time has evolved and our thinking has evolved about people being included, was that you don't need to spend 30, 40 years learning a skill before you can kind of be integrated and included in your community. So we made a, a, a very difficult decision at the time, again, uh, significantly changing and impacting on people who had been accustomed to spending upwards of you know 25 35 years of their life at a segregated setting and now those individuals have all been supported to move forward and are included in various capacities one of the most significant accomplishments is the number of volunteers so people at the humane society people selling tickets throughout the community uh, supporting various organizations and um, it's just been so empowering and so enlightening. We went from seeking out opportunities for people to volunteer to now we don't have enough people to supply because of the number of agencies and organizations. Well, I was going to say, should we give a plug? But I mean, if, <laughs> you're, it's doing, you're doing very well without even, just very by word so. of mouth, people very have discovered so. that uh, the individuals from CLA, once again, their skill sets, allow them to be act one, as wonderful volunteers, yes. representatives of the community, right? Um, and integration again, um, and a sense of purpose. You know, that's something that's actually, there are a lot of people, it's recommended that uh, if you are somebody who perhaps is suffering from depression, or um, if you are a senior citizen who's lonely, that the thing to do is to volunteer your time yes. and go out and try to and it, make, it gives you that sense yeah. of purpose and makes your life feel so much better. Absolutely. Uh, and then what about the living, the, the people living on their own? Yes, so uh, over the last probably 10 to 12 years, we've been looking really for housing options, which are more in line with community housing, community-based housing options for you and I. And uh, we had started with approximately 103 people receiving group living supports. Uh, we're down to about 59. That doesn't mean we're supporting less people. We're still supporting the same number of people. But we are finding other ways, other than group homes where you have four to six individuals living together. We are finding ways very recently, or actually in, in the not too distant future, we're going to have a gentleman we support leave a group home setting and he's going to be living in a local condominium. So it's just going to be a remarkable story to move forward with. I look forward to hearing many more of these stories. And uh, here at On TV, we're looking at supporting CLA and giving you a platform. And you're always welcome back. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, you guys, terrific. Thank you, John Policicchio, Executive Director of Community Living Algoma, and of course, <laughs> the lovely with a Z. Thank you. Yes, uh, <laughs> Leslie with a Z, Wilson, and off camera, we want to thank Jarrett. Jarrett, some sessions. Uh, break a leg, Jarrett. I wish you the best in your uh, um, interview for the job. Maybe you'll be back on On TV as a full time employee. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, uh, listen, I'm going to come back to wrap things up, but uh, stay where you are in the meantime. Once again, thanks to my guests. We'll see you back here on point in 60 seconds. Thanks again to Community Living Algoma for joining us here on On Point. In case you'd like to find out more or find out how you can help, I've got some ways that you can help them inspire possibilities by contacting them either through Facebook at Community Living Algoma, uh, through Instagram at Community Living Algoma, through Twitter at CL Algoma, or their website, communitylivingalgoma.org. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for On Point. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Murphy. We'll see you the next time.